It's our third day of Funkmas, and that's Funkmas. F-U-N-K. I don't want to get demonetized with them thinking I'm saying something else. Anyway, today we're going to be listening to Why Can't We Be Friends by the band War, and I want to give a special shout out to my friend Aton Mursky, who donated this copy. Check out his music on Spotify, he's got some great stuff. And I'm not just saying that because I performed with them. California band War wasn't a typical funk band. They combined a number of musical styles, most notably Latin rhythms. Originally, they were tapped to be the backing band for Eric Burden of The Animals fame, with producer Jerry Goldstein acting as the band's George Martin of sorts. But Eric Burden and War didn't last long, and so the band carried on without him, with everyone contributing songs and sharing vocal duties. This includes Howard Scott on guitar, Lonnie Jordan on keyboards, B.B. Dickerson on bass, Harold Brown on drums, Papa D. Allen on percussion, Charles Miller on sax, and a distinctive element to their sound, Lee Oscar on harmonica. In fact, I actually use his harmonicas in my own shows. <laughs> Lee, I'm open to discussing a sponsorship if you're watching. By 1975, they released a number of successful albums, most notably the socially conscious World is a Ghetto. By comparison, Why Can't We Be Friends feels a bit lighter and more mellow. Which is partially why it hasn't grabbed me in the way I was hoping for, but there's still plenty of material to check out here. It kicks off with a great opener called Don't Let No One Get You Down, sung by Howard Scott. The song is anchored by D. Allen's percussion and features a moving sax solo by Charles. The lyrics are very uplifting, which could be interpreted as either Howard singing to a loved one or his community at large. Their harmonies are so distinct, maybe not technically perfect, but definitely memorable. The follow-up ballad is nice too, sung by B.B. Dickerson. Seems like a gentle love ballad with vivid imagery, though some of these lyrics seem quite suggestive. So stop and sip my cactus syrup before you climb into the stirrup. The Ohio players would be proud. Leroy's Latin Lament is a favor of mine, initially a ballad driven by Lonnie's piano and vocal before it explodes into an all-out fiesta with moving Latin percussion, virtuoso piano playing, and a Spanish vocal tag. Afterwards, Lee Oscar's harmonica returns to the opening melody. His playing is very simple, but the vibrato creates an alluring tone. I do kind of wish Lonnie returned to sing one more verse, but this is still a standout. Of course, the album's essential track is one everyone knows, Low Rider. The low rider. You got that cowbell opening, I gotta have more cow a low vocal from Charles, and that irresistible hook played by his sax and Lee's harmonica. Charles plays a cool solo before the song fades out. The musical anacrusis at the beginning came by complete accident, where drummer Harold Brown got the downbeat mixed up with BB's bass, but they liked the groove so much, they decided to keep it that way. Indeed, it is a funk riff that'll make you want to jump in a hot rod and ride down the streets of Lawn Beach. This was the band's hit single, along with the title track, Why Can't We Be Friends, with more of a reggae groove. Why can't we be friends? The band came up with the idea while touring in Japan, realizing people from different cultures were more alike than different. A positive message. Everyone gets a chance to sing a verse. Even Danish Lee Oscar, which makes his lyrics all the more powerful. Though if I can be honest, I think I appreciate the message more than the music itself. It gets a little bit monotonous after a while. And there's a couple of other songs that don't really do it for me. Like the Funk Jam Heartbeat starts off well, Ain't No Need Worrying About the Future, but it's really missing that raunchiness that the Ohio players, or even Earth, Wind and Fire, were able to deliver so well. Smile Happy is a nice instrumental, Lee's harmonica adding some nice flavor, but it's just not as dynamic as the jams heard on their earlier albums. Overall, while I did have a good time spinning this record and really appreciate the creativity and messages of brotherhood, it's a little bit low energy for me, and it doesn't really seem to have that sense of urgency on albums like The World is a Ghetto, so I don't think that it's enough for me to give the album a goldfish. Remember, a goldfish is reserved for albums I recommend you buy on vinyl. A spotted fish still can mean I like the album, but I recommend streaming it before you decide to buy it. 
And that's how I'm going to rate War's Why Can't We Be Friends, a spotted fish, but like a smiling spotted fish. I definitely do recommend checking it out, but I'd also spin their earlier albums as well. But what do you think? Is Why Can't We Be Friends War's Best Album? Comment below, let me know, and I'll see you tomorrow for day four in our five days of funk mess. Mm -hmm.